Hi guys, this is the sixth Anatomy and Physiology screencast and this week we're going to be discussing the second lesson in biomechanics which is regarding centre of mass and stability. Alright, centre of mass. The centre of mass is commonly defined as what you see on the screen, the point of which a body remember a body is a person or an object, is balanced within all directions. So essentially it's that center point of weight distribution. Now, when you're looking at objects such as a football or a tennis ball, for example, the center of mass is quite straightforward because it's pretty much the center of the object. A little bit more difficult is something like a rugby ball so the center of mass there might be a little bit different but generally it's still a roughly around that center point in terms of the weight distribution because it's quite an even distributed object the tricky bits to think about are where are the center of mass in terms of our bodies and that usually varies from person to person for example if we look at an adult male and an adult female, so we're looking at Laura Robson and Andy Murray here, the centre of mass or the centre point of where their weight is even is probably going to be quite different. If you look at Laura Robson, she's slightly smaller, slightly more weight around her hip area, so the centre of mass might be a little bit below or around her tummy button. Whereas if you look at Andy Murray, his mass is generally concentrated more towards the shoulders and so his centre of mass might be slightly higher maybe around the bottom of his chest so in terms of the difference of the centre of mass we need to realise the difference between males and females in that regard stability is another area where you need to have extensive notes and it's important to realise that having a stable body position will enable an athlete to resist motion. So if you remember, motion is force against an object. So we talked about those things last week. And if we're in a good, stable body position, we can resist force pushing against us. However, if you're unstable, force pushing against you will enable the athlete to fall over or what we call go into action so if somebody comes along and pushes you if you're balancing on one leg that initial force is going to make you tip over so you are unstable and you have gone into action you, you've fallen over you're out of balance so when you're unstable force can be acted upon more easily how stable you are as an athlete is often affected by three things First of all, where your centre of mass is at that time, so your position of the centre of mass. So if you're in a lower position, your centre of mass will become lower. If you're on your tiptoes and stretching high, your position of centre of mass might become higher. The position of the athlete's line of gravity, that means in a nutshell how close you are to the ground. So the closer you are to the ground, possibly means the more stable you will become whereas it, as you're moving into the air so if you were jumping up and catching a throw in a line out for example in rugby it means your body's less stable and people can come and impact you and push you off balance and lastly the size of the athlete's area of support how many limbs are in contact with the ground does that make you more stable? You need to think about those sort of things. Have you got a large surface area, a large base of support? That will resist force better than if you've got a very small area of support, again, if you were on tiptoes. In terms of this centre of mass idea, factors affecting the centre of mass are the actual mass of the body or object. So the larger your body is, it will affect where the centre of mass is at that point in time. Again, the size of the base of support, so if I've got three limbs, two legs and an arm, on the floor, gives me a wide base of support for my body, it will spread my centre of mass. 
the height of the center of mass. So the lower I am to the ground, as I explained with gravity, the more stable you are because you are moving your center of mass towards the floor. However, if you're weightlifting and lifting the weight above your head, the center of mass will move upwards to justify the weight you are carrying in your hands. Again, the number of points in contact with the surface, so we explain that. So if you have more points in contact with the surface, then you're going to lower or reduce or spread out your center of mass. And that point about gravity we've mentioned before again. So good examples here, if you look at American footballers before they start the snap, where the line of scrimmage is, those players have three points in contact with the ground. They've got two legs and an arm. And so that means a nice wide base of support. So when they go to impact each other with force, they can try and resist motion and try and stay stable. And therefore, each player can't move past each other because the force will be resisting the motion and the center of mass of which they're uh, attacking each other. Another good example is in a rugby scrum. So we see here there's a player on the near side, or a couple of players, who have their knees and feet and hands almost on the floor so their stability and center of mass is lowered and so therefore they become much more stable much uh, more propulsive to the scrum so they can actually push more without force pushing back across them okay again as per usual if you make excellent notes bring them with you to class with some questions and we're going to discuss this and work some practical into this as much as we can